Hey, how are you? I hope things have been good. Mental health. It's one of the things I think that is really, really important. Is that taking care of your mental health. And a lot of people know how to improve their mental health with meditation, being more mindful, improving your physical habits. But a lot of people don't know the actual things that are destroying their mental health. I'm going to go through five things that are literally ruining your mental health that get you from being feeling like you're on top of the world to feeling that you're literally depressed and stick to the end because all of them are really really important my name is wada and i help other young men like me take back control of their lives the first one is pornography this is something that we all know is bad for our health we all know it skews our sort of mental image of the real world when you are super addicted to it and you actually go interact with a real life woman you know that your whole image and perception of them is so messed up because it's something that you're so addicted to. Basically watching that kind of stuff, training you to be the creepy guy who sits in the corner who likes watching it but doesn't actually partake in it, which is really, really weird. We all know that this is bad for our health, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this. The second one is no emotional control. Off the bat, this kind of sounds bad. It sounds like I'm saying like, oh no, don't be too emotional bottle up your emotions and get really get go go to a dark place no 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 that's not what i mean that's why i said no emotional control being able to control the moments where you get too emotional but also stop yourself from bottling up those emotions to the point where you get to a really dark place for example when i was taking my very first motorcycle test my cbt test when I was taking it, it's a whole day and then it's like a two hour exam. I got really, really stressed on the road. I got terrified of the cars, kind of like stage fright, but on the road, which is really, really bad. I drove on the pavement like twice and I still, for some reason, thought I had a chance of passing. And when I failed for the first time, I was devastated. I was really sad. It cost a lot of money. I was super excited to be driving on a bike and I failed. I got home and I was I was angry, I was really pissed, I was really sad, annoyed. But I remember going out on a walk and then just kind of sitting and then thinking to myself, no, 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 take a big deep breath, you'll try again tomorrow. You'll book another exam, try again tomorrow, be a little bit more confident on the road, do a little bit more research, and you'll be fine. And I did, and I passed my second exam, with quite a lot of ease actually. And I talked to my friend about this, and that's the second most important thing about this, is having a close friend you can be emotional to. Having a guy best friend who you could literally cry to, and he would not look at you any differently. And he could do the same to you, and you wouldn't look at him any differently. A friend who completely takes care and actually thinks about your best interests. A guy like that that you can be completely emotional to when you need to be when if i let myself go way too emotional in that current state i would have probably not taken that cbt exam again i probably would have you know played the victim mentality and kind of become depressed and eat a bunch of junk food and watch and binge watch netflix and that leads on to my third point the victim mentality oh my god it is so so windy it's making it hard to film having this victim mentality has devastating effects on like how you act throughout your whole day always thinking that i'm the victim it's everyone else's fault not mine i'm the one who needs to be looked after and coddled i'm the victim it's one pathetic and two if you start believing that you're the victim all the time eventually people will start treating you like the victim and you'll be excluded and that being excluded from social environments can affect your mental health i think the best example of this is like my very first relationship i ever had when we first got into the relationship, I was quite, I was very focused on me. I wasn't this sort of like pathetic guy. And then over time, I then became sort of more pathetic, more comfortable around her. And then I started having this victim mentality and then she broke up with me. And obviously that's not, I still had the victim mentality. It's her fault, it's her fault, not mine. Even though that you can't really stay in love with a guy who's always playing the victim mentality. You fall out of love with that. It wasn't a healthy style of thinking. And that leads into my fourth point, negative thinking. Staying negative, always complaining about things in life, not actually doing anything about it. Having this negative thinking, it's really hard not to because thinking back to when I 
had this sort of mentality, I was thinking about it a lot unconsciously. I wasn't even realizing that I had such a negative style of thinking. When people asked how I was during college, oh, I'm tired, eh, I'm tired, eh. Like, I didn't realize I had this really dawning negative style of thinking, and obviously that's gonna have a really dawning effect on your mental health if you're always thinking negative things. And the thing I did to, like, change this and stop complaining about everything was that I started gratitude journaling. I write 10 things every morning about things I'm grateful for. Now what this does is basically it forces me to think positively. And the more I do it, the more I'm looking for things to be positive about, from the tiny smallest things to the biggest things in life. And this helped me switch almost forcefully out of a negative thinking into a positive thinking. And the fifth one, probably the most hidden one that not many of us know, and that is indecisiveness. Being indecisive can have a lot of problems on your mental health because of something known as, fuck me, it's so windy, fuck off, it's cold, is that there is something known as decision fatigue. When you are having a decision you need to make that it's dawning on your mind, on your shoulders, and you're trying to choose but you can't, you get tired. When you have a decision to make on your mind, it is tiring, and this is known as decision fatigue. Something that you might have had to deal with, it's something I had to deal with a lot, especially when I was a young child, like my dad used to take me and my sister to a shop to buy toys, and I would, my sister would like pick the first thing she saw, but I would have to go through the whole shop, think about what toy would I play with the longest before I got bored, which would be more beneficial to me, which did I actually like, and then I got to the point where I'd be there for 20 minutes and I wouldn't even buy anything in the end. And I did this every single week, despite knowing that next week that my dad would bring me back here again. How tiring that was, and I didn't even get a result out of it. Decision fatigue kinda sucks, I'm not gonna lie. And that's why I created something known as the 5 to 5 rule. The 5 to 5 rule is basically, if it doesn't matter more than 5 minutes, don't worry about it. But if it matters more than five years, then that's okay to think and really think about. So like, for example, oh, what chocolate bar should I eat today? Ooh, it doesn't matter. No, I'm not going to eat that chocolate bar. I'm going on a cut. I'm going to the gym. I'm not going to eat junk food. Or like, you're just making a small choice between two like things which doesn't really matter compared to like, oh, should I get pregnant? Wait, that doesn't work for me. Should I have a child? Like stuff, stuff, something like that. If it matters more than five in more than... If it matters more in five years, spend your time thinking about it. If it doesn't matter more than five minutes, then don't worry about it. Just choose whatever comes to your mind first thing. If you're not subscribed to me, then there's a chance that you will never find this channel again. But if you do after this or you're already subscribed, another video will pop in the corner. And if this video helped you out, you should 100% click on this because this could definitely help you out as well. Stay consistent and do the best you can. You know what time it is? Yeah. Self-improvement kiss.